G'day mate, welcome back to Factorio with me, Jitty. And today, 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 today we're doing something very important. Today we're going to be covering nuclear power because our power levels are a little bit behind. So today's episode, nuclear power. But first, the intro. We interrupt this message to bring you a nuclear safety check. Ah. Uh... Deconstruct those, deconstruct those, deconstruct... No! Come on, robots, save a reactor. Uh, yes. We now return you to your regularly scheduled program. So with that out of the way, first thing we want to do is we want to make some nuclear fuel cells. So nuclear fuel cells require one shiny rock, 19 of the dull rocks, and 10 iron. The good news is we have just a few dull rocks in the network. Ah, uh, yeah, there's like 10k in there, roughly. As for shiny rocks, we actually have this Covex process is running non-stop. What I want to do is I want to take half the shiny rocks out of that one, and I want to put them into this one. And start that process at the same time i want to grab a couple of shiny rocks for myself and we're just going to grab a few dull rocks and we're going to manually throw them in this so i can make uh just a few uranium fuel cells at the same time i do really recommend this is one of those things you want to prod, uh, put productivity modules in as it stated stated before it doesn't run that often because the fuel cells last 200 oh, 200 seconds each you get 10 of them that's 2000 seconds worth of fuel on top of that, it is going to consume your shiny rocks, which is something that you may need to keep an eye on. So we're going to make some fuel cells. Uh, next thing we're going to need is some reactors. Now, nuclear power is different than any other power you've dealt with before. So pay attention. This one's going to be a little bit different, a little bit more complex, but really lets you scale power very, very quickly. So we can see our nuclear a nuclear reactor. On the right-hand side, it says it consumes nuclear fuel, 40 megawatts. We need to get some nuclear fuel. If I put one piece of nuclear fuel in there, it's going to start consuming it straight away. Even though the power is not hooked up to anything, it's not actually making power. It's heating this thing up. As we can see, it has a temperature over on the right-hand side. And it outputs 40 megawatts worth of heat. It's not power yet. It's just heat. To use that heat, we need to take some heat pipes, put them on the reactor. As you can see, they are slowly getting more orange, I guess, um, as the reactor heats up. To So this transports our heat along a distance. To convert our heat into something useful, we put in a heat exchanger. A heat exchanger takes in water, much like your boilers did, and outputs steam, much like your boilers did. On that, we'd put a couple of steam turbines. Now, you might remember from our original boiler setup, okay that these guys it was just a simple one to two ratio nothing too complicated okay these guys consume 60 water per second therefore they turn it into 60 steam per second these uh, steam engines consumed 30 steam per second each and we got two of them so that's 60 60 equals 60 done these guys they do 103 water per second which is like that's fine that's an arbitrary number it really doesn't matter these guys do 60 per second, which means the actual ratio is like one to 1.78, which I might be completely wrong. Edo JD can correct me, but I think the ratio is closer to like three to five. And you can do funny stuff like this, you know, as the ratio goes out longer, it might be more exact to do, I don't know, like whatever to whatever, okay? It's 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 a pain. I honestly, I don't bother, okay? Uh, main reasons I don't bother, okay, is the water calculations or fluid calculations in Factorio are CPU intensive, okay? Very, very CPU intensive. So you want to sort of minimize that because the only thing limiting the size of your factory is well two things one technically your free time but more re realistically it's your uh your cpu power okay because i've built many mega factories like if you go look at any of my old well most of my old series you're going to find out there's some sort of mega base 
more often than not. And the limiting factor is this, your frames per second and more importantly, the UPS, that's updates per second. If you build too big, that UPS will drop lower and lower and lower. Okay, and different mods and different things can impact that in different ways, but we're talking strictly vanilla here. Your updates per second is what what is king, and you want to keep that number as high as possible. Like, in fact, uh, we've got the time tools here. Let's turn the game up to uh, 32 times normal speed. I can run at 12 times normal speed, roughly, on this base. Okay, um... So I can run this 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 base really really fast, which means I have plenty of headroom left on my CPU because it's not that big. Number one, number two, I try to optimize things as I go. So I really really recommend that you just run one heat exchanger into two turbines. The ratio is not perfect because technically you'd need 120 water in. You're only bringing in 103, but it really doesn't matter that much it means rather than these guys putting out a maximum of 5.8 uh, megawatts worth of power out they're going to put a i don't know ballpark here a five megawatts each like five point something megawatts each so like it's no harm no foul okay so back to our nuclear reactor as you can see it outputs 40 megawatts worth of heat our uh heat exchangers consume 10 megawatts worth of heat so we could go Four of these in a row. Uh, eight of these in a row. And because my maths is not perfect, we might have got 35, 37-ish megawatts worth of power, okay? Out of this combination, all right? Um, no, actually, we'd get the full 40. Yeah, we get the full 40. We get 40 out of that, which should turn into 40 here which we'd run into these, it just means these wouldn't run at 100% capacity. They only run at like 98% capacity, but they still output 40. So, uh, 40 megawatts worth of total power. So, that's a nuclear reactor setup. But you might notice on the right-hand side, it does have one more thing. It says outputs 40 mega megawatts with a 0% neighborhood bonus. So, neighborhood bonus is when you take another nuclear reactor and you line it up with it. Uh, and they have to be exactly in line. If they're off center like this, the heat pipes between this reactor and that reactor don't connect. Therefore, no neighborhood bonus. If you put it right here, you can see that it shares heat and instantly became basically the same heat as its uh, the same heat as its neighbor. And we can see they're both doing 40 megawatts each. But if I put a nuclear fuel in there and a nuclear fuel in there, we can see they're now doing 80 megawatts each. So we just went from this doing 40 megawatts to this doing 80 and this doing 80, which instantly means that that can double in length. Uh, plus, I could put the exact same over here. Okay, so we could quickly see how fast nuclear can scale. Now, that's if I could just got two of them. If I added another one, uh, I'm going to put fuel in you as well. We can see this guy's doing 80. This guy's doing 80. But this guy's now doing 120. Because he's got an extra eight, 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 an extra neighbor. If we keep scaling this. 80, 80, 80, 160. I'll put another one here. Uh, fuel. In there. Uh, 80, 80, 80, 80, 200. So that's 200, that's 360, that's 4, 8, 480? No, it'd be more than that. 360, 420, 500? 500. 500 megawatts worth of power, like this, okay? So, nuclear reactors definitely work better if they're all connected to one another. They're all sharing the heat across, so you can really ramp things up. Um, what was this? This was 80 megawatts? That's 100 megawatts. That's 200 megawatts. That's 300 megawatts. That's 400 megawatts. That's 500 megawatts worth of power off of those reactors. Got to remember our original one was one of these and four of these. And because of the neighborhood bonus, like I'd have to hook up heat pipes and everything. We're just going with examples here. Uh, that 
of five reactors is way better than one reactor doing this. So, neighborhood bonus, super, super, super important. Okay, other things that are super, super important is being able to automatically put fuel in. So, we'd have to have insert, outsert, uh, request chest in, passive provider out, just because it's easy to have the bots deliver this sort of stuff. And we can put boxes here, boxes here, boxes here. I can't get any inserters and boxes in this one. So, it means I'd have to manually every... 200 seconds per fuel cell and of course I could overfill this I can fill this right the way up with fuel and then come over every not that often but seldom well reasonably often actually and manually refuel this at the same time taking out all the used fuel cells um, out of the system but we really don't want to manually do anything any of this because it's factorio so what we're going to do is we're going to forsaken that one. We're going to put that there. I'm going to copy that and we're going to go input, 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 remove that. Yes, you can chain them along, but you also have another limitation. That is how far a heat pipe can carry heat. Okay. It's another really important number. I don't have the number in front of me, do I? Uh... At 160 megawatts, which is... So you guys are 120 megawatts reactors. If you actually had fuel. So these guys are 120 megawatt, uh, megawatt reactors. Which means they can carry the heat around about 55 tiles. So... 25... They can carry the heat along a heat pipe around about this long before it gets too low that the heat just won't tra transfer any further. If we go up to 160 megawatts, so I added another reactor here and we did some funny business to get fuel into everything. It then only transfers... Uh, 45. The tr heat actually transfers shorter and shorter distances the hotter you run your reactors, okay? So, yes. Um, this has become my happy compromise for reactors, okay? Uh, we have four reactors doing 120... Where's more fuel? More fuel. We have four reactors doing 120 megawatts each. That is 240. That's 480, 480 total. Which means each one of these heat exchanges, if you remember, uses 10 megawatts each. By the time I get to... Uh, what was it? It's 120. So by the time I get to 12 of them, uh, I'm pretty good on heat transfer. But more importantly, it's 12 per reactor. Uh, I built this too high. Yes, I built this too high. Okay, reactors, pick up. I'm going to move you down here. It means I need to put fuel cells in all of you again. Oh. Alright, it means that I can carry my heat up to about this distance. About 12 long without too much hassle. But the other thing is, um, everything runs on steam which requires a water input. So it also means I need to get water in each one of these um, these heat exchanges, which means they consume 103 water, uh, water per second each. If we go to our offshore pumps, our offshore pumps produce 1,200 water per second. I have 12 of these in a row, which means they're going to consume... 1236 water total and with one offshore pump I can only provide them with 1200 so I'm a little bit short on the water I'm a little bit short on the turbine ratio but more importantly I made this as simple as possible for the fluid calculations okay we only have one water pipe to deal with which feeds all these guys we only have each one of these splits off into a single set of steam turbines, 
which again just simplifies the calculations. It has one heat pipe, which believe it or not is actually a liquid. Just trust me on that one. The way the game considers it, it's actually a liquid. Uh, or it uses the same code as the liquid code. That's probably more accurate. So this is my nuclear setup. Okay, now it does require a couple of other things like, you know, substations to power it up. One there, one there, one there, uh, oop. one there. Uh, can we copy those, please? And they should go right there. There's a rover port in the way. You, rover port, move up to toss. Uh, that goes there, that goes there. And then, if I line this up correctly, that goes there, we go in, out. Yeah, I know, stop attacking. We're super low on power. Yeah. No, we're fine on power again. Well, there you go. Uh, and you require a substation, right? there which also links the top of it to the bottom of it and then last thing i do in my power setups is i put in single so report right there so that way when i copy and paste this build it comes pre-assembled with the substations with the rover port uh with the requested chest to bring the fuel in with we don't actually use passive provider chests so if we remember our different our box types we have passive provider which lets the robots pull stuff out we have storage chests which let them dump crap into we have a buffer chest which lets the bots put stuff into and take stuff out of we have the requested chest which is what we're using to bring the fuel in we also have these purple ones which is an active provider chest one of the important things with an active provider chest is the bots just take everything that's in this chest and put it anywhere else. Um, mainly storage. So, we don't want our reactor set up to ever stop. I don't want this to ever clog, clog up with used up uranium fuel cells. So, if we make these purple, a bot is going to instantly, they don't care what's in there, they're going to pick it up and take it away. All right? They'll just take it straight up to storage and dump it off. So, this becomes my nuclear setup. This is also the nuclear setup I'd recommend for you guys, purely because it's plain, it's simple, it's not too big. The other thing I'd really recommend is once you build it and you can cut it, you try and put your very first one probably on a lake, uh, which is what we're going to hopefully do. So let's physically run up there. We'll worry about getting nuclear, actually, we'll do that first. Yep. Like, might as well have it going. Uh, and if you remember some episodes back, I started mass making landfill for small projects like this. So I want to have offshore pumps uh, here, I guess. So I'm going to press shift to place that there, which should be able to line everything up. We're going to turn off our personal robots because I don't want to waste the landfill that I have in my inventory. Uh, bigger. Okay, so about that big, we're going to paste that across. I'm going to paste that across. And now we need to look at how far to the left we have to go. We have to go to it looks like one tile. Nope. Uh, another tile. Where's the landfill? Yeah, it's about there. That should fit everything. And then back to our landfill. Smaller, smaller, smaller. Uh, okay. Uh, paste. So I need a little bit of landfill here. I hope that was in the right spot. It was. Uh, which means I need a square there for that substation. Yeah. I need a 
Square there for that substation. Yes. And square there for that substation and there. So, that should be it. That should be it. Bot should come lay down the landfill. We just need to hook up some water pipes from here around uh, to here. Straight pipe there. Straight pipe there. Uh, pump, 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 pump. Go away, trees. Uh, we'll keep those. Uh, pipe. Now, there is nothing stopping you with this particular build. If we just go to... That was a boo-boo. Uh, um, no, let's paste more of the build down. There is nothing stopping you moving everything out by tile or a couple of tiles, having a slightly longer heat pipe right here and bringing in water from this side. I've seen people do that with this particular build. It's perfectly acceptable to do. Uh, I just quite happy to bring in water from the outside. It, it does the job. Uh, okay, so the only thing I need to do is I need to have landfill there, there. There and there, so I can actually get an offshore pump plugged into that end. And we just need the bots to come build everything. Come on, bots. At the same time, it'd probably help if I actually hooked it into the main power grid. Yeah, that way we can start powering everything up. Uh, turn my robots back on. Go, guys. Get stuff done. Can I reach? Can I reach down? Can I reach down? Nope. Uh, landfill. And you guys have requests? No. Nope. So we're going to request in nuclear fuel. I'm just going to request in 10 because I don't have that much. In fact, I might not have any. Um, it was literally what we handcrafted or, or threw through assemblers really quickly. So that's that started. Okay, we're going to walk away from that because it's going to need time to preheat. And I really recommend you don't hook up the water until it's preheated. Just because some reactor setups, some definitely some reactor setups you'll find online that really run on the the edge condition for how optimized it is. You might find after you start flooding it with water, it doesn't actually get hot enough to actually turn on. So back down our Covex process. Couple of things. Couple of things first. One, we can rip up these beacons. Okay, um, beacons are great to start the system off, or if you really want to make a lot of uh, atomic bombs, being you know nuclear rockets, then you know, maybe you want to keep the speed beacons to get the process running as fast as possible. Keep the process running fast. But I generally pull them out at this stage. At the same time, I need to put my assembler... And this is one of the reasons it, get pull, it gets pulled out. Because I want to put my assembly machine right here. And you, sir, are going to make fuel cells. And the reason I want it here is I want to be able to draw off this belt. Okay, this belt which should always have shiny rocks going around and around circle, circles. So I want to make sure that, that I always have a source of shiny rocks to get this process up and running. Same thing I need to do is I need to put another longhand inserter. I need to put in a splitter. Uh, and hook into that my uh, dull rocks. But before I do anything else, I also need a centrifuge to recycle my used up uranium fuel cells back into normal uh, normal dull rocks. And actually, we're going to put that here. Yes. So, with that, uh, it needs output inserter. Uh, nope, we do do that. That's got to go on that side of the belt. Let's just clear off the belt real quick and throw them back in there. So I need an output and setup which is going to side load onto this belt. Now, exactly how you build this is entirely up to you, but this is just good enough for right now. So, uh, give you power. So the only other thing you need is a requester and a 
passive provider. We'll get to all that in a second. So i also cover this really, really quickly because I actually had somebody on my Discord. Um, this is why I really recommend that you come join the Discord. That way, if I make mistakes, you can come yell at me and I'll, I'll see them straight away. Whereas the YouTube comment system is... Yeah, less than ideal. Um, but at the same time, from memory, they're actually a supporter. So they were watching the videos early and they noticed the mistake and therefore they got to tell me early. Anyway, um, with the shift right click to shift left click to request a chest. Uh, according to the wiki, it says that it requests in 30 seconds worth of material. Uh, in the case of this particular demonstration, because this is literally where I noticed it earlier today, uh, we need five used up uranium fuel cells per 30 seconds, because that's the crafting time, and it has a crafting speed of one, so we need five of these every 60 seconds. If we go to here, we can see we're requesting five, which is 60 seconds worth of production. The wiki says when you copy and paste, it does 30 seconds worth. But we just did 60 seconds worth. So I am so not sure it's not funny. Um, but realistically, whether it be 30 seconds or 60 seconds, probably really doesn't matter. But what we do want to do is we want to have this convert our used uranium cells back into dull rocks. And we want to put these on the side of the belt that's closest to our uranium, uh, to our um, fuel cell generator. Oh, um, assembler. Assembler is probably more accurate words. So we want to put it on this side so it's close to this. So this insert of definitely preferences taking used fuel cells that have been recycled and processing them into new fuels, fuel cells. More importantly, we don't want the belts backing up rather than doing it any other way, shape or form. So... Um, this just makes sure that this is the first thing to get used. You guys need to have your productivity modules re-added. You need to copy, paste, and remove those two. We're going to bring in iron. Again, you want 14, which is... Evercraft, if you've crafted a speed of 0.5... 10 seconds. So 30 seconds would be... 30 iron plate, 60% crafting time would be, that seems like that's, the 14 seems like it's about 30 seconds worth. So I'm so not sure. Okay, so with that done, we just need to add iron to this. The other thing I do want to do is I actually want to limit the input inserter for shining rocks. And I want to say if nuclear fuel cells in the network is greater than 10, 20, 20. I do not want this inserter adding more shiny rocks, okay? Because shiny rocks are definitely going to be a bottleneck. Like dull rocks are not a bottleneck. Iron is not going to be a bottleneck. But if there is less than so many in the network, we'll have this inserter turn on. He, he can automatically add more into the process, and we should be good. Uh, we're saying that we're going to dump all the shiny rocks that I have in my inventory into the system to get it definitely up and running. Uh, have you preheated? Yes, you're all up to 600 degrees plus. We're going to... Uh, we're going to run up there and put down these guys manually. And then we'll have our first nuclear reactor up and running. Now, with your first, often leads to building your second. And that's probably the net very next thing I'm going to do. I'm going to build a second nuclear reactor set up uh, just so we have... The spare, the spare power when we need it. Uh, we're going to run down, around, up, and down, and left, and righty, and wash your pops. There and there. Mm, fuel source? They're on their way. Uh, yoink. Cool. Everybody's got some, got some fuel cells. The heat pipes are still hot. The temperature is still going up because obviously we've not maxed out the system yet. But if we click on our lovely substation, we can see that our power steam engines, which were running at capacity, are now doing one third capacity. And we were maxing out the power grid at like 240 megawatts. Now we have 865 megawatts spare. Yep, one hell of a difference. It also means that if I copy that 
and we say include the tiles. So it comes pre-made. Nope. Try again. Include tiles. It comes pre-made with all the landfill. I should be able to work out where the next pump goes, right there. And paste this directly above the last one. Yep, like so. Which obviously needs some landfill help and coordination. Smart. Oh, it is marked. Okay. So, we should be able to put down another nuclear reactor uh, right here. Which should solve a whole bunch more power problems. Uh, can I get another pump? Pump, pump, pump. Uh, pump. Thanks, game. Uh, which looks like it's going to have to go all the way over here. So, we'll just run our water for right now. We'll run our everything else after it's preheated. Uh, actually, we'll probably won't even wait for it to preheat. Alright, after it's being, finished being built then, that's probably more accurate. Uh, actually, I want to put that in there. We want to open the blueprint. I wish to remove all pipes, all underground pipes, and all... No, just that offshore pump and that offshore pump. Click Save Blueprint. And then when I put this back, hopefully it doesn't ruin... Uh, ruin anything. So, first nuclear power plant up and running. Power is now sorted for the short to medium term. Uh, Covrex process is up and running. As long as I can see some shiny rocks on this belt, it does mean I can keep doing this um, right the way, basically, until I get to the end of the belt. At which point, I could either... Well, I could technically extend the belt further out. We could probably get more repeats of the process in. Same time, we're going to trim you there, there, and there. And we're going to get rid of that. We're going to get rid of that. That. Uh, that. And that. That belt goes away. That belt goes away. Uh, that one, that one, that one, that one. You're still active. Uh, all of those go away. Yeah, just want to do a quick tidy up. Uh, we want to bring back up that power plant and paste it right there. So, another thing I want to do is I want to, when it comes to new power plants, I don't want to have these input inserters. Okay? I want to have the fuel already in the boxes, by all means. I also love it when I can pre fill each of these guys with just a tiny bit of fuel each just one or two uh in fact these have all been filled with one that'll do us because i want to be able to have the whole system preheated okay because our heat exchangers do not start boiling water until they hit 500 degrees celsius okay so anything sub 500 degrees means they just don't do anything so that's another thing i want to when i first build it put in just one or two pieces of fuel each we should preheat most of the pipes most of the heat exchangers up to around about that 500 degrees celsius mark might go a little bit over might go a little bit under um same time it's optional like i said i wouldn't recommend hooking in the water just yet but i'm lazy i'm going to do it right the way now uh, right now just assuming that i have enough power to last for a little while uh before i have to extend it and hook up this system so it should give it enough time to equalize prior to me hooking it up um it's probably the best way of putting it uh but yeah we have nuclear fuel we have the Covrex process 
We have a bunch of dead and sodas that I need to go clean up. We also have... Come on, press M. M for bat view. Thank you. We also have our first nuclear setup with our second well onto its way. It's building slowly. We're relying on bot power here, but that's perfectly fine. So, we have our second nuclear power plant up and running as well. And with all that said, well, our first nuclear power plant up and running, our second nuclear power plant being built. But with all that said, like I said, um, come swing by Discord, say hello. Um, tell me, tell me what your thoughts are on the whole requesting one minute worth of production or 30 seconds worth of production. Because now I'm really, really curious. Um, so yeah, come, come swing by Discord, stop the general channel, and generally chat about Factorio with us. Uh, at the same time, if you like the video, I do wish you'd give it a like button. At the same time, if you're new here, you want to see more Factorio videos like this, I really recommend you click the subscribe button as well. But with all that said, this is where I'm going to end this episode. We've got nuclear power up and running, so we're pretty set on power. Um, obviously, if I had a giant lake to, 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 to blueprint them in like this that would be a lot better or maybe even like this I could get uh, I get a few stamps through here um, just to keep the lights on and like I said they're just easy to build in water because they're entirely out of your way then catch is you do need to provide landfill and I can't see how much landfill that costs after the fact uh, but I can see our little outpost has, uh, actually according to Logi Network, it has 7.2 thousand landfill in it, which sounds like a lot until you need to, uh, with 50% coverage, uh, maybe 60% coverage, we're at 1.3k landfill. Um, so it doesn't take long to go through a very extensive stone patch, convert it into landfill, and find out you have no landfill left over. But yes, like I said, with all that said, this is where I'm going to leave it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you're enjoying. Like I said, if you enjoyed the video, click, give it a like. If you're new here, click the subscribe button. With all that said, I will see you guys in tomorrow's episode where I guess we're going to hammer out artillery... Probably solid uh, rocket control units and artillery. Um, at the same time, I think I need to do one more combat episode on more combat-y stuff. Uh, plus, we need to look at solar panels and accumulators and a few other things. So, yeah, we're getting towards the end. Oh, oh. Atomic bombs. Yes, we need to cover that as well. Um, so, yeah, there's a few more things to go. Anyway, like I said, that's it. I'm done. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you're enjoying it. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's episode. All right. Bye.